I'm so excited today. We're tracking pine snakes, Florida pine snakes, which are one of my absolute favorite snake species. We're here on a 1,428 acre parcel. And believe it or not, in this one area, there are 12 snakes with radio transmitters. So I'm not talking very loud because behind me, they're listening for that beep, listening for the signal that tells them where the snake is. What exactly? Is so this contraption? Yeah, this is one of the transmitters that we're using inside the snake. Oh, so cool. You can see it's about the size of a double A battery. And then they each have a, a you know a particular frequency. It's, and we haven't had any snakes that we found um, that appear to have any, you know, big infections or any sort of um, you know issues associated with having the transmitter inserted. So they kind of just go about their business. They kind of like just go usual. about their business right. like usual. Wow. I think these are six grams. We didn't want to get something too bulky, mm -hmm. but you also, you know, we wanted to get movement data over the course of a year. So we, you know, have to balance. We're coming up on a year from our, the beginning of our study now. So the plan is to capture the snakes and have them removed at the conclusion of the study. Okay. That beeping, as it increases in um, volume, and in frequency, we know that we're getting close. All right, so at this point, we're probably somewhere between 50 and 100 meters. It's kind of an arc. And usually when I get to about a volume like that, I really start kind of paying attention to where I'm stepping. Jeez, yeah. Probably right, right in here. So as you guys know, I spend a lot of my time looking for snakes. And I've been all over Florida looking for these things, and I've only seen one. Um, it was over in the western panhandle and it's so frustrating because studies have shown that they spend like 70 80 percent of their time underground and as you can see we just tracked this one and it's underground um, just out of reach so we know we're close we know it's right there but we can't see it um, that's kind of how it usually goes but hopefully we can get one we'll see so this time around we're not really going after a radio transmitter um, signal we are actually checking a trap. This is a way that researchers use to capture the pine snakes or other snake species to then implant the radio transmitters in. What is this weird contraption <laughs> thing? This is what we're using to catch the pine snakes. So this is a box trap. Um, and then the whole thing is kind of called an array. So we've got, you know, this box that's four feet by four feet with uh, essentially a funnel on each face of the box that kind of necks down. So it's easy for the snake to find it, but once the snake gets in the box, he's got to find a hole like this. So it's a lot more difficult okay. to get, get out of it. Um, and then we've got four arms that are 30 meters long each. So the snake travels through the array. If he hits the drift fence, 50-50 chance he's gonna go towards the box. And a lot of times they just follow the silt fence in to the trap like this coach whip just did. Coach whip? Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah, I got him. Handle him like he's a mamba. <laughs> that thing looks like it could pack a punch, Ricky. Yeah, that's why I hunt, handle it like it's a mamba. <laughs> I don't want to get bit. I'm tired of getting bit by these things. <laughs> that is a big snake. He's a pretty big coach whip. Coach whips are incredible snakes. They get really big. They get over six feet long, and they've got these huge eyes. Why would they have huge eyes? Well, they're visual predators. These are snakes that do what's called periscoping. They'll stick their head up and they'll go. And when they hone in on a lizard or another snake, they'll, they'll look at it, spot it, and then chase it down. They're very fast. I've run many down and caught very few. And the thing is, once you catch them, that big gaping mouth, those sharp teeth, they don't let prey get away. They've got really sharp teeth. And man, if you catch them, they will chomp you. They will bite you and it will hurt really bad. So um, they obviously get their name from their appearance. They look very much like a braided whip. They've got that dark handle and then that braided pattern down that white colored body. This is a really big snake that we found, but it's not, it's not a pine snake. It's not that great, but it's still pretty cool because it shows us that we're in the right habitat. Both of these species need open, sandy, upland conditions to thrive. And usually where you find one, you find the other. So it's a good sign, even though we didn't find a pine snake. I'm hoping that as we go through the day, we can find other species too. We'll see. Wild Wander is made possible by the generous support of organizations that believe in the importance of the stories we tell. If your organization would like to talk about a partnership opportunity, contact us at info at macroscopepictures.com.